Hello, good morning or good day. Welcome to Turning Point with Femi Emmanuel. Welcome to TPGF, Turning Point Global Family, Daily Devotional Prayer and Prophetic Altar. Wake up to this altar daily, maybe while still lying down on your bed, sitting, kneeling down, standing, pacing up and down. You can even take the phone with you along to the restroom or bathroom, as some people call it, if that is what you do as you wake up. Anyhow, do your devotion first before you start having interaction with people. Let it be God's first in your life. I say this often because it's a culture we need to build into our life. I want us to build that culture. After turning point, pray more on your own for as long as you can. Pray speaking in tongue if you are able to. Pray also in your understanding. God hears and answers both. Welcome also to Friday, the 24th day in November 2023. Six days to the end of the month and 37 days to the end of the year. I prophesy every day the remaining days of this month or year shall be a miracle for you. Now open your hand and heart. Be responding with amen. I receive it as I deliver what God has loaded in my spirit for you today. This will not just be another weekend for you. It shall be a weekend of honor, of good news, of victory and dominion in all you have in mind to accomplish. Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that builds it. But if the Lord builds it, then they will labor in pleasure, they will labor in profit. I speak over your life, you shall not labor in vain. This weekend shall be profitable adventure for you. Job 29 verse 29 is God's memo to all of us today, TPGF members and all listeners. And it reads, when others are cast down, then you will say, there is a lifting up and God shall save the humble. Let's do this, if you can. And if you cannot do it, as at now, listen to the prayers. Say amen to it. And when it is convenient for you, do so and play back the message. Let's do this. Walk around your room. Walk up and down. Walk slowly up and down. And as you do, say this. Say it clearly. Let your ears hear it. When others are crying, I shall be smiling. When others are saying things are hard, life is tough. There is inflation. No more help. No more money. It shall be different for me and members of my families. Strange doors of help and assistance shall open for us where we need them. I will not know scarcity. I will not experience dryness. When there is darkness, my light will shine brighter. Helpers of destinies shall rise and support me and my cause. Same grace of anointing shall flow to my children and my entire family. I will receive favor and assistance in a strange manner. I believe it. I declare it. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. That is it. So shall it be. You will not have less. Jehovah overdo. We do it beyond your expectations. Say amen. I receive it three times. Who is this? Your long expectation shall happen soon. Congratulations in advance. Everyone, hold or raise your phone for a lot upon a lot prayers today. I speak over your life. Receive grace for a lot upon a lot. From far and near, from home and abroad, your name, your face, and your thought shall come up in good people's heart. They shall bless you financially. For businessmen and businesswomen, consultants, contractors, goods and services providers, sellers, traders, suppliers, and all, this is your season. You shall record the highest turnover this month and next month. This year will end for you in joy and happiness, joy and jubilation. All say, Amen, I receive it. Yes, anoint yourself for it, it shall be so. Now, 24, uh, November 24, celebrant your prayers. The Lord bless your bad day. The next 365 days of your life shall be days of signs and wonders. They shall be full of testimonies of divine surplus in Jesus' name. Happy birthday. Right, listeners? We still have today, tomorrow, and Sunday for teachings uh, from this question and answer. From Monday, 14 days of testimony shall start. It is always two weeks 
of question and answers and teachings and two weeks of sharing glorious testimonies. Let's see how many issues we still have time to treat today. First one, Daddy, do I have to pay all the tithe paid on the whole amount paid to me from the rent of my late father's house? Because I had you saying only part of it should be paid. So, as tight, wow. Well, that cancer was not for you. Your case is different. You inherited your father's properties. That's a gift. That's an inheritance. You have no cost price to consider. You can only deduct the cost of maintenance. Each time you carry out maintenance, you should pay your full tight on that collections. Next, good morning, sir. My question, how long should a man who lost his wife mourn for the late wife? Is it six months or one year? Please, daddy, help me because there are many cancers given all over. Wow. When it comes to the issue of bereavement or mourning, a lot of people, even Christians, you will be surprised, pastors, they just take to their tradition and all kinds of cultural and tradition rituals and demands, they are wrong. Please read First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. It makes it clear. The word of God there says to us who are genuine believers, do not sorrow and mourn as those who have no hope. Our beliefs as Christians is that we shall meet again with our departed loved ones at the feet of Jesus Christ. Therefore, painful loss, yes, but not mourning forever. There is no particular number of days. I think in my own reckoning, two to three months should be okay. The only other counsel is for those who wish to remarry to give it at least a year apart so that it doesn't look like uh, you were waiting for the spouse to depart and for the sake of people. Wait for at least a year to all the believed. Please don't mourn forever. It negates our Christian beliefs and our faith. Next, good morning, daddy and OTPGF. I lost my husband last year. I decided to observe a year for mourning. I set aside some clothes I have been using in, for, uh, in, the, in the year. It's almost a year. What is the Bible take on this? Should those clothes be burnt or just kept aside somewhere? Wow. You just listened to the counsel I gave on a related issue now. I am not blaming or rebuking anybody. Many of us are from the African descent and we have our traditions, which most of the times are not related to the Bible at all. That's how we met it, or that's what people say. That's what we always say. Don't burn it. Dry clean it or clean it up and give it out as gift, as seed to the less privileged. To them, it will be an answered prayers. But mourning a departed husband for a year and packing all the clothes used at that year away or burn them are mere traditions. No, nowhere in the Bible, in the four Gospels and the Epistles is such things mentioned or written. Next, good morning, Daddy, and my awesome TPGF. Daddy, please cancel. Cancel pastors and Jews that like to lay curses or swear for members, pastors, or even unbelievers that misbehave or that made mistakes. I feel uncomfortable in the church as I think it is not right. Wow, yes, it is not right, and it cannot be right. It is unscriptural and ungodly. Cursing members or making them to swear for what? Romans chapter 12 verse 14 says, Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. James chapter 3 verse 11 also says, uh, Does a fountain bring at the same time sweet water and bitter? How can a pastor or a Jew, given the mandate to bless, now be cursing? They missed it there. If you are in such a church, under such a pastor or a Jew, 
Please prayerfully move away. Relocate. That atmosphere is polluted. That environment will not make anybody to thrive. Men and women of God are mandated to bless and not to cause. We will do more on this tomorrow. Please reprocast this to all of your contacts. Do so for us and for God daily. There will be no ask or question broadcast, live broadcast tonight, as I announced it before. I'm far away in a conference in another church convention and it will take us late in the night before closing. By Monday, we will return to ask or question broadcast Monday's edition. Prepare your communion element today for our online communion tomorrow. Tomorrow is the communion service. And tomorrow's communion shall be called communion for complicated issues. Identify all complicated issues in your own life, your marriage, your health, your business, your career, your finances, and complicated issues in all your loved ones. We'll present them before God tomorrow. After prayer and the communion, consider it done. And it shall be done in Jesus' name. Our World Lifting Conference Annual Shilu is counting down. It shall be from December 11 to 17. Everybody note it. I'll be saying more about it. Friday is a good day to pay one's tithe and sow one's seed. Back to seed, Thanksgiving seed, partnership committed, commitment seed, your vows, your seed of 11, 11, 11. We are sowing this 11th month of the year and connection to grace, 668. You can hear the testimonies people are giving. If you do what they do, you will get what they are getting. Heaven will always open for anyone that can tithe and make sacrifice. Devourers will be shielded away from you. Do it by faith. Do it with joy. The Lord will bless you. I prophesy to everyone's life, heavens will open for you. This prayer you daily receive will become the realities of your life. The one you also pray for yourself shall drop down what you need. God's backing shall be available for you. You will never go down, forward ever, backward never. What God cannot do does not exist. God sent me because of you. Heaven will not rest until you are truly blessed and fulfilled. I'm Femi Emmanuel. I love you. TPGF, truly blessed. Bye.